And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. Hi! Yes? Oh. If you're like me, you're no doubt a big fan of this podcast, the Pope on Film. I mean, who isn't? It's sweeping the nation. But but only true fans, real hardcore fans who have been with us since day one. Ride or die fans of the Pope on Film podcast. They would know the two basic facts about the both of us. Two undeniably real, really real, and in no way made up on the spot facts about the both of us. America's hottest will they or won't they couple since Sam and Diane has their was the last time there has been a couple this on fire since Bunny and May Lynn. Uh, the first fact, which is about you, Bunny, is the fact that when you're not doing the podcast, you are a celebrated couples therapist. So tell us, Bunny, how do you save a relationship? Give our listeners some of your sage relationship advice. I... There are so many different techniques, you know, Freud and Jung and, you know, a, a whole a whole history of therapeutic practices. Uh, but I really feel I am much more of a traditionalist where I like to use torture and blackmail nice. to keep a couple together, you know. Nice. Uh, I will usually you do this by um, lulling them into a false sense of security, you know, to where I am a, a, a trusted part of their life, okay? Mm -hmm. And then I slowly work to convince them that as a couple, they need to murder a homeless person, okay? And then I use that to hang over their heads to keep them in the relationship together. You know, so that yeah. is that. And I have a very high success rate. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. You I know, like it's, that. it's pretty amazing. These people stay together and they keep their fucking mouth shut. Mm hmm. Zip it. Uh -huh. And the second fact that you would know about me is that I'm a lover of history. I love it. But I'm also a storyteller. And so this is the part of the show where we take a story from the history books, maybe one that people don't know that well, and reword it via my own special, unique storytelling razzmatazz. I see that. Wow. Uh, oh, you totally made me. Sorry, I lost you, my spot. You threw up my groove. <laughs> uh, yeah, via my own unique <coughs> storytelling style. So that's what this is another educationally uneducational installment of Steve's Historic Approximation. Dun, 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 dun. Or Shap, as I like to call it, repeatedly, annoyingly, whether anyone wants me to or not. Now, personally, I like the name Shap, despite the fact that I don't really go by Steve anymore. I go by May Lin, but May Lin's historical approximations, Millhap? That sounds horrible. Absolutely horrible. F plus. Yeah. So it's still got to be Shap. Anywho. This week on the old Chappity Shap Shap, we will be discussing the one and only Mr. Peter Jackson and how one trilogy of films of his made the New Zealand film industry, put it on the map, made it recognized worldwide, and how okay. another trilogy of films of his absolutely fucking killed the New Zealand it film industry okay. he built it up and then he destroyed it hooray peter jackson was both a 
a blessing and a curse to his home country of you, not Australia. Do you think it was the plan all along? No. No. I think I think, you know, if I had to put a cap on this whole story at the end of the podcast, but I do it now instead of then, I would probably just say, uh, motherfucker got burnt out. Yeah. And just sort of lost control of everything. That that's basically the problem. Because if it was a plan, that is some serious mad villain energy Next going on there. level shit, yeah. You know, like, that, that's, um, I will give them what they don't know that they want. Yeah. Then I'll that's take some, it away. That's some Doctor Doom shit. So let's talk about the career of Peter Jackson. Fun fact, his actual name is Michael Peter Jackson Jr., but he goes by his middle name of Peter so that people don't confuse him with the singer. Isn't that crazy? Okay. Just kidding. It's total bullshit, but uh, his, his full name is Sir Peter Robert Jackson. He was knighted by Queen Elizabeth because, and this is true, she fucking loved Meet the Feebles. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Elizabeth was a huge fan. In <clears throat> fact, the history books show that the moment that uh, uh, Princess <clears throat> Diana died, Queen Elizabeth was on her throne watching the sodomy song over and over again. <laughs> so she was just a well, big fan of that one song. He is one of the one of the handful of directors that that when you heard they were doing something, you were like, "What? That guy?" Yeah. Now, most likely, most people, most likely, you and I knew who Peter Jackson was. Well before Lord of the Rings, where most people didn't. But when it was announced that he was doing Lord of the Rings, it was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. That guy? Yeah. Seriously? It, and it was like the same reaction I had when I heard Sam Raimi was doing Spider-Man. I was just about to say that. I was, I okay, okay. So, the tree rape guy. Yeah. Is doing Spider Man. Yeah. You, you gave weird. him, you just gave him big, big fucking sacks of money. Yeah. Yeah. To make, to make Spider Man a blockbuster movie. Yeah. And you gave it to the evil dead guy. I, I recently. When I say recently, I mean sometime within the past year. I recently saw the first Spider-Man movie again with my high schooler. Yeah. And it just hits differently this side of of the of the pandemic. Just just it, Peter Parker's creep in this movie. Ah there she is, Mary Jane Watson, the girl next door. I've had a crush on her since I was six. I stare at her from my bedroom window. I love her, despite the fact not talking to her ever. I still remember when she was in the class play when she was in third grade. I'm obsessed with her. I go through her trash. One day she will be mine, even if I have to kill her and wear her skin. <laughs> it's like, fuck, Peter Parker. Chill out. Yes, yeah, so so talking about the career of, of old Petey Jacks here always blows my freaking mind, because how the hell does someone go from I kick arse for the Lord and the sodomy song to three-time Academy Award winner, including Best Director. How do you pull that off? The freaking mystery is what it is. I don't... I, well, it, it, well, but he did do a... You know, he did do a couple of pieces that were a 
bit more mainstream, like the Frighteners and uh, Frighteners. Oh, Heavenly Creatures. That was like, uh, no O. Drop the O. Like the Facebook, but Heavenly Creatures. Freaking Heavenly love creatures. that movie. Freaking love that movie. I was obsessed with that movie. Yeah. The uh, the woman who plays the. It's based on a 100% true story, and the Kate Winslet character grew up to be a very successful mystery author. Really? Yeah, when I worked at the bookstore, uh, I looked up the movie Heavenly Creatures on our Bookmaster computer system yeah. to see what it said about the movie, and it said there in the description that, like, oh, yes, uh, uh, one of the characters of the film grew up to become writer Patricia Cordwell. And it's like, holy shit, we've got like 40 of her books over in the mystery section. She killed her mom? <laughs> what the fuck? No wonder she's a good mystery writer. It's like... Write what it, you know. <laughs> it's, like if, it's like, fuck, somebody get OJ a MS office. Somebody make sure that O.J. Simpson has MS Word. He's going to be the next freaking uh, mystery writer over here. However the hell you do it, he did it. His Lord of the Rings trilogy is downright astounding, and the blockbuster success of those films marked a change in society as a whole. Excuse me for sounding old, but I remember when only nerds knew who Clint Barton was. Yes. I remember when this many people, and for those of you listening on SoundCloud or, or whatever, I'm, sh I'm, sh I'm crushing your head. Crush, crush. Uh, I remember when so few people knew who Jennifer freaking Walters was. Yes. I remember when only nerds wore Punisher t-shirts. I remember when only nerds cared about the music of Weird Al Yankovic. Yes. I remember when only nerds knew the names of Star Wars characters. I remember when only Dungeons and Dragon geeks, bookstore employees, and librarians Knew the name J R R R R Tolkien. Yes. I remember when the only people who cared about the Joker were nerds. Uh huh. I remember when uh, discussions of the Joker led to saying the phrase, oh man, no one will ever be a better Joker than Jack Nicholson. And I, I never liked his Joker. The first Batman movie, like, I like it, and I think it's very visually pleasing. I never thought it was, like, the greatest movie in the world, and I didn't think Jack Nicholson did such a great fucking Joker. Jack Nicholson is just being Jack Nicholson. It's like when you see the movie Aladdin. Yeah. Because Robin Williams isn't the genie. Robin Williams is just Robin Williams. Yes. That's the magic of Kevin Hart. He should be given an Oscar because in every single solitary movie he has ever been in and will ever be in, he's just Kevin Hart. Yeah. It, like, okay, yeah, Jeremy Irons can become all of these characters, but you know what's even harder than that? Being yourself in 40 movies. Yeah. Now that's near impossible. I mean, Robin Williams was Popeye. Yes. He was Popeye. He wasn't Robin Williams in Popeye. Kevin Hart is Kevin Hart in every Kevin Hart movie. Get that man a special Oscar. I, I still want to see Tarantino's Popeye. Fucking hell yeah. I wanna I wanna see Tarantino playing Popeye. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be down with that. 
I think he would make a great Popeye. All he would have to do is squint up an eye a little. Yeah. Yeah. So I was I was gonna do a Popeye impersonation. And I'm like, I, I once I started, I realized how woefully unqualified I was. Yeah. Yeah. So this is how I think Peter Jackson became such a celebrated uh filmmaker. Yeah. That it was a slow rise <laughs> of him making more popular things. And yeah, The Frighteners was like a big deal when it came out. But also, I think that for decades, people in Hollywood said, the Lord of the Rings series, nigh unfilmable. You cannot turn it into a movie. No one can. Only an absolute batshit crazy son of a bitch could turn those books into a watchable film. And P.D. Jack said, well, I'm a batshit crazy son of a bitch. Here, hold my beer. Hold my New Zealand beer. Yes. And because I'm a professional, here's where I binged New Zealand beers. So Peter Jack said, here, hold my Tui. Okay. That, that's a New Zealand beer, just in case you're not from... Hold my Wanaka treble cone. That's a New Zealand beer. Okay. Hold my Emerson's book binder. Hold my Max Cider. Hold my Max Gold. Hold my DB Bitter. Okay, I've got one more. Hold my Epic Lager. Okay. okay now I'm done. Now I'm done. <laughs> okay, I'm just kidding. Hold my Moa. My Lion Nathaniel Stein Lager. Hold my Stein Lager Pure. Hold my Monteith Black. Hold my Yeasty Boys. Eleanor, you keep knocking this camera. Can you sit somewhere else? People were staring at my lady boobs this whole time. We Stop can knocking this camera down. It's okay. not. It's not too late to send her, to sell her to the gypsies. I'm going to I'm going to be like 80s parents. Eleanor, I need you to sit somewhere else or else you're going to uh what was it? Military school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bringing back military school is yeah. So everybody said only a crazy son of a bitch could turn the Lord of the Rings books into a series and uh uh pd jack said hold my lion nathan spites old dark <laughs> i'm gonna go make lord of the rings so i need you to hold my lion my lion nathan spites old dark don't want anyone to take my lion nathan spites old dark Real hard. Because I think it's really funny to spend a large amount of time mentioning beers that only New Zealand people have heard of. That's my humor. I find this <laughs> hilarious. So finally, there's a director that's crazy enough to turn the Lord of the Rings series into a trilogy of movies. It was a massive hill. It was a massively uphill battle, and it wrecked P.D. Jacks physically, mentally, emotionally. At one point, the studio was strong-arming him to kill off one of the main hobbits. Yeah. And it's like, you should kill off a hobbit. And it's like, but none of them die. Why? Because it's exciting and also it's a trilogy, so you should kill somebody. One of them should die in a very heroic fashion. Right now, all of the actors who are in Stranger Things are being interviewed, being like, hey, maybe Robin could die. And well, it's like, no, Steve Harrington, I should die. No, I want to die. Like, all of them want to be the, the one who sacrifices themselves. I, I, I'm sorry, though. I want I want to see this alternate for I have always wanted to see Mary cut a bitch. Nice. Okay? You know? Yeah. Just... And I... And was it you who had the idea to do a Stranger Things spinoff where it's just Steve and Robin doing various jobs? 
Was that you who had that idea on the podcast? I don't know. I know it sounds familiar, but I don't know if it came from me. Okay, well, either way, it's a great idea. It could have, maybe not. How good of an idea? Let's go that way. If you think it's a really great idea, like a fucking phenomenal, awesome, totally me. Yeah, there you go. Okay, yeah, it was your idea. (laughs) So... So they're ba- so they're trying to strong on strong arm Peter Jackson into killing one of the hobbits, and he's like, no, because it's not in the books. He, like he refused, and so the studios tried to fire him. In fact, in an in a interview with the Hollywood Reporter, Pete Jack said that it was so it, like he seriously considered getting hypnotism to forget that he made the movies in the first place. Okay. That's true. So the Lord of the Rings series made like three point four kajillion dollars and it made Oscar gold. And it really put New Zealand on the map in terms of movie making. Peter Jackson revitalized the New Zealand film industry. Let's put a pin on that because that's important. Yeah. And so obviously studios were knock knock knocking on Jackson's door wanting him to do more films. So they're like, hey, uh, let's do the Hobbit. And Petey Jacks is all, hey, fucking no. Yeah. So the studios are like, huh, crap. Without Petey Jacks' name attached to this, I don't know if this will be successful. I don't <coughs> think that we can go ahead with like a Hobbit movie without Peter Jackson. How can we trick him into directing this film? Hmm, I've got an idea. Clears throat in parentheses. Well, it's a good thing Peter Jackson isn't directing this Hobbit movie, because that means we don't have to make this movie in New Zealand. Let's shop this film around. Maybe Ireland would like well, to they, film a but, Hobbit movie. Or Scotland! But they already just finished, like, fucking him over for the money he was owed from Lord yep. of the Rings. And then as soon as that they get to, I, I, come on, that's a slap in the fucking face. Don't it you is. think? Don't you it think? That's like, and, and that's, then like, that's you, like the girl who breaks up with you, calls you the next weekend because she's lonely and wants to go, go to a movie. Yeah. It's not and a then, date. It's not a date. She's going to be cruising guys the whole fucking time. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And then they use New Zealand basically as bait to try and trick Peter Jackson into being in the, into directing this film. It's like, oh yeah, I, uh, if Peter Jackson doesn't want to do this, I guess we're going to Scotland. I guess New Zealand doesn't get all of this money and jobs. Yeah. I guess Ireland is going to be Middle Earth now. And Peter Jackson's like, fucking. Fine. If it means another uh, series, if another, if it means Hollywood spends like you know more millions of dollars on my beloved New Zealand, I guess I'll make this stupid Hobbit movie. And so P.D. Jacks is reluctantly making the Hobbit. It almost killed him. He was so stressed out of like the I don't know six eight years that it took for him to make the first trilogy, and now he's making this other film. And he's he was already screwed over so much from the first series of movies. And now he's making this other one. And it's even more stressed out than the last one. He got an acute perforated ulcer from stress, had to have surgery, and was bedridden for a good portion of The Hobbit. And okay. a, lot of, a lot of the stress was from the fact that it was so hard making the Lord of the Rings and fighting with a single studio. And now with The Hobbit, a crap ton of different studios have their hand in the pot. There's New Line and MGM and Warner Brothers and... uh, 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 Too many cooks, too many cooks. (laughs) <laughs> too many cooks, too many cooks. So there's like five different studios that are putting out money for The Hobbit. 
And the studio saw dollar signs that blinded them to a lot of quality. Hey, let's make it a trilogy. Okay, but The Hobbit is a short kid's book. It doesn't matter. Make it happen. It's three movies now. And so that's why the Hobbit trilogy is uh, padding the movie. Yeah. Because the original book is like a kid's book. We had it in the children's department of the bookstore. You can read it in like a day or two. So how do you make three movies from this tiny kid's book? That's why, oh, we need to cross this river. Oh, no, we're, we're, we're. Going down the river rapids in a barrel. Oh no, the barrel broke. And now I'm falling into another barrel. And now this is a 15 to 20 minute action sequence. Yeah. Because the plot is about this long. I, case- we, we, we saw the first Hobbit movie in the theaters. And like mm-hmm. I have no recollection of this movie. And Even though, they, like, I am, I am very intimate with the plot because, like, I, I loved, like, that was my original trilogy. It would be the Rankin Bass Hobbit, the Ralph Bashke Lord of the Rings, followed up by the Rankin Bass Return of the King. <laughs> nice, yeah. You know, so like, I know the story of the Hobbit. <laughs> yeah, I have no recollection, like. I can't even picture a scene in my head from that fucking movie. And then they intru- and then they introduced in the beginning like, "Oh, here's your Chicago Bulls. Here's your here's your Hobbit team." And then like, "Okay, inside of a uh, of Bilbo's hovel, in walk 30 different hobbits, each one with a impossible to remember name, and each one you will absolutely forget. Yeah. Five minutes after watching this film. So, but here's how, okay, so here's the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh, it revitalizes the New Zealand film industry. Here's how The Hobbit killed the New Zealand film industry. (coughs) Yeah. The laws concerning actors and royalties, residuals, The laws are different in New Zealand than they are in the United States. So, if you're an American and you go to New Zealand to make this film, so you're an Elijah Wood or a Sean Astin, okay, you finished the movie, you got paid for the movie, and now here you go, you get royalties, you get residuals, you get a cut of the money from Lord of the Rings from now until Doomsday Day, it might not be the biggest check in the world. I remember seeing uh, uh, the the VH1 behind the music of Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah. And they interview e- comedian Emo Phillips. And he holds up one of the residual checks that he just got for being in the movie UHF. And he yeah. shows it. And it's three cents. <laughs> So it's like, okay, so if you're like a Sean Astin and you're in uh, the Lord of the Rings, okay, you got paid and now you'll get royalty checks from year until infinity. They might not be the biggest royalty checks, but you get residual. But if you're a New Zealander and you're in Lord of the Rings, so like a Carl Urban from The Boys or a Brett McKenzie, you ain't getting shit. All the New Zealand, the local New Zealand actors do not, will not get residuals from the Lord of the Rings. It's the law in New Zealand for actors. Hey, you want another check? You already got paid, mate. So, and now you want to get paid again? <laughs> so, you made the movie. Second, now you Second payment? You've never heard of second payment? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so our boy Petey Jax is all, well, that shit's not fair to all of my New Zealand actors. This time around with the Hobbit trilogy, I'm going to change all that. So right before the camera started rolling on the Hobbit, the New Zealand Actors Equity Union went on strike. A New Zealand actor strike. All of us actors. There is a no acting clause. No actors are going to work. Uh, 
to ensure better conditions for New Zealand actors during the Hobbit trilogy, all of the New Zealand actors went on strike. And Peter Jackson is all, yes, aha. Ten minute because warning. Of me, because of me and the Hobbit trilogy, now all New Zealand actors will be treated fairly from here on out. And it's all thanks to me. I don't see this blowing up in my face at all. Peter Jackson, forever a hero to the New Zealand film industry. So the New Zealand the New Zealand actors are all on strike. We want to be treated fairly is is all we want. But all the studios who are still blind with dollar signs, the studios push back. Oh geez, Rick. We're just a bunch of Hollywood studios that wanted to give a bunch of New Zealanders jobs. And now we can't give New Zealanders jobs because of these arrogant actors who will all starve to death. Look at all of these set builders and makeup actors who, uh, and I don't know, gaffers, who are now going to starve. Why? Because these arrogant New Zealand actors want more money. For shame, I say! <laughs> And this smear campaign worked. And New Zealanders were all like, yeah, it's, that's not fair to all the non-actors. To all the makeup people catering, the set builders. Someone should do something about this. So Warner Brothers sends lawyers and PR people. And the, the studios behind The Hobbit threatened to film The Hobbit elsewhere unless the strike stopped. Enter... New Zealand Prime Minister John Key. He was the New Zealand Prime Minister at the time. This motherfucker was the head of global foreign exchange for Merrill fucking Lynch. During his time as the, C as the head of Merrill Lynch, he was known as the smiling assassin for cheerful Fully heartlessly firing hundreds of people for budget cuts while earning millions of dollars a year. So this prime minister is a real asset, okay? He's rich, a one percenter, corporation-friendly, fiscal conservative, pro-free market, anti-worker, cock goblin fuckface. <laughs> he passes a law. It's still in the books. It is known as the Hobbit Law. So now, in New Zealand, because of the Hobbit movies, and thanks to former Prime Minister John Key, the definition of an employee in New Zealand legally excludes anyone working in the film industry. Okay. Meaning all New Zealand <coughs> actors are now independent effing contractors. Okay. Which means they, it, it, New Zealand actors don't have uh, any like job security, uh, a, and also, they legally cannot unionize anymore. Okay, but isn't that kind of like how it is, though? I mean, aren't they? I mean, they're unionized, certainly, but... I mean, I'm talking about Hollywood. I mean, well, well, in Hollywood, they <coughs> basically independent contractors. Well, uh, they're employees, and they do have some rights, and they go on strike all the time. <laughs> it is illegal for New Zealand actors to go on strike now because of Peter Jackson in The Hobbit. Really? Yeah, New Zealand actors have less protections now. Because Peter Jackson made the Hobbit trilogy. You saved the New Zealand film industry, and then a few years later, you fucking killed it. And here is the icing on top of this shit burger, Bunny. Okay. The first season of The Lord of the Rings, The Ring of Power, the world's most expensive TV show, yada, yada, yada. They filmed the first season in New Zealand, and now all future seasons are being filmed in fucking scotland oh this is really fucked up 
the Lord of the Rings saved New Zealand film, and then Peter Jackson's Hobbit trilogy killed it. Yeah. It kind of makes sense because the Lord of the Rings is this amazing trilogy, and then there's the Hobbit. So yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, it makes sense that the Hobbit would be the one that destroys the New Zealand film industry. But it is fucked up for New Zealand actors. And that's because of it because of Peter Jackson. That's fucked up. That is very fucked up. And I know I say this during the end of almost every shab in existence, but I'm gonna say it again. Uh I'm surprised that more people don't know about this. No, that I actually came was... as a surprise to me. I thought I, I thought the Lord of the Rings movie that the, the Hobbit movies were well, just a flop. I didn't think anything more about it. Yeah. But but the Hobbit trilogy had a massive effect on the entirety of New Zealand. And I thought this was a very topical shap due to the Amazon television show that I have no interest in watching at all. I, I'm that, just not... That kind of fantasy is like... I feel like... Lord of the Rings, like, did it for me for that kind of fantasy, and I don't really need much more of it. See? So I don't need Game of Thrones. I don't need that. Although I do have Amazon Prime anyway, so I did try the first episode. I thought it was slow. I also have Amazon Prime. I watched all five seasons of Kids in the Hall. Kids in the Hall Brain Candy. The Kids in the Hall documentary same guys different dresses the uh tour show kids in the hall tour of duty and the documentary kids in the hall comedy punks oh and kids in the hall death comes to town so now i am finally prepared to watch the sixth season of kids in the hall okay so i am prepared i've i have been i am Balls deep in kids in the hall right now, but anyway, <laughs> that's it for not the, the date first person to know. say that either. <laughs> not that right. Uh, that's it for Steve's historic approximations this time around. Be sure and join us for more educationally uneducational fun with Steve's historic approximations. Mm, and cut on that.